Okay, there we go. Okay. Hello, guys. Good evening. Good evening. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están, guys? ¿Qué tal su día? Qué gusto verlos por acá. Good evening. Hello, Freddy. Pesado, pero ahí vamos. Me imagino. Thanks. Okay. Yes. So tired. Hello, I can good evening, teacher. Good evening, uh, Sullivan, Francisco, Freddy. Thank you. Me imagino que, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo les fue? Eh, qué bueno verlos por acá. Este, el día de ahora pues, ha sido un día bien movido, un día con, no sé si ustedes, creo que todos se han enterado, ¿verdad? De las noticias, trágicos accidentes. Entonces, qué bueno que estén acá. No sé si alguien, eh, bueno, vamos a ver acá. Vamos a ver, denme un momento, guys. Eh, ok. Permítame un instante nada más, guys. Tengo que hacer algo aquí, rapidito. Just give me just one second. Please bear with me. Sí. Ok, there we go. Ok, there we go. So sorry about that, guys. I just had to, I just had to make some adjustments so we don't have any connection problems for the class. Vamos a ver acá. A ver qué tal, guys. Cuénteme qué tal ha estado su día, aparte de cansado. ¿Qué han hecho ahora? Trabajar nada más. Ustedes son personas Reímos muy... muy bien con el trabajo. <risas> ah, ok, ok. Muchas gracias, Francisco. Pero gracias a Dios en casa, aunque parece que, que quiere llover por esta sí. zona del norte de San Salvador. Sí, verdad. Este, bueno, yo acabo de regresar a casa también y estaba como bastante nublado, bastante oscuro. It was really cloudy, so it seems like it was about to rain. So, yes. Thank you, Francisco. What about the rest? Welcome, teacher. Vamos a ver. Creo que vamos a ver. Carmen, buenas, buenas noches. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo está? Buenas noches. Bien, teacher. Gracias. Qué bueno, mucho, mucho gusto. gusto. ¿Qué mucho tal? Gusto. Muy bien, gracias. ¿Cansado? Creo que todos estamos cansados ahora. Ah, sí. Sí. Creo que la mayoría nos toca trabajar. Sí, sí. Pero bueno, así toca, ¿verdad? Sí. Mucho sí, gusto sí. y gracias. Igualmente. Eh, hola, teacher. Hola. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Hola, Julio. buenas noches. Sí, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás, Julio? Eh, pues más o menos. Eh, teacher, solo decirle que, bueno, vivo carretera al puerto de la libertad y no he podido llegar aún a mi casa. Ah, oh, ok. Y sí. estoy, eh, bueno, esperando a que va a poder pasar para mi casa y... Así que me he quedado en un lugar cenando, pero aquí voy a estar en la clase. Very good. Thank you so much. Julio, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for that commitment with the class. I can imagine that you, well, probably you got stuck in traffic because today it's been crazy, guys. Uh, like I mentioned before, I had to travel to San Salvador. I have a motorcycle, okay? I don't have a car, but I have a motorcycle. So I went to San Salvador and there was a lot of traffic because of the accident. Uh, I think that you guys probably heard about the accident in the news, right? So it is a terrible accident. It's a really awful what happened. I, I think they said that about two people died already because of that. So it is really sad what happened, guys. So I'm, I'm happy to see you here today. Sorry, I'm here. It is Thank you, three people. Pardon? Yes. Three people who died today. Three, three people died. Okay. Yeah. Well, a motorcycle. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yes. Uh. Well, that's that's really awful, guys. And I think that we need to be really careful when we are driving, because sometimes, like in this case, uh, there is uh, other people that they they I mean they are not good at driving. They have mechanical problems like this person had. So we have to be very careful when we are driving. 
eh, fue eh, muy feo, la verdad, yo estaba afuera y me enteré de las noticias de lo que pasó, ¿verdad? Y la verdad que uno se preocupa bastante y se pone a pensar que podría ser uno, ¿verdad? Que le pase algo. Entonces, tenemos que tener mucho cuidado, guys, cuando estemos afuera. Vamos a ver. Bueno, creo que ya estamos la mayoría, somos 12 por ahora. Eh, para los que no estuvieron ayer, por si alguien no pudo estar, si alguien es nuevo el día de ahora, Ayer estábamos hablando acerca de, bueno, nos presentamos, dijimos las expectativas que tenemos. La mayoría, nuestra expectativa es aprender. Queremos mejorar, ya sea nuestro listening, queremos mejorar nuestro speaking, queremos mejorar todas esas habilidades de grammar. Así que eso es lo que vamos a estar haciendo. El día de ayer nos presentamos la mayoría y también, este, bueno, planteamos la forma en la que funciona el curso de que van a ser cuatro semanas, 16 clases de una hora. Y también empezamos con el tema que era del pasado simple. ¿Ok? Estábamos hablando que teníamos el pasado simple, el cual es para hablar de cosas que pasaron en el pasado, valga la redundancia, y eh, bueno, iniciaron en el pasado y terminaron en el pasado. Dijimos que teníamos prácticamente como dos categorías. Teníamos el verbo to be y luego teníamos también el resto de los verbos, ¿ok? Dijimos que el verbo to be era como el I am, you are, he is, she is, that is the verb to be, right? And then we have the other verbs, like we have drive, cook, um, watch, all those verbs, ¿ok? Play, study, esos son los otros verbos eh, que están en la otra categoría. Entonces, para esos verbos que no son el verbo to be, dijimos ayer que solamente a la mayoría le agregamos al final a la forma base solo la E y la D, para hacerlo en el, pas en el pasado, ¿verdad? Luego teníamos los verbos irregulares que esos cambiaban totalmente. Y dijimos que esos no, no tenemos un número definido, pero eh, simplemente nos los vamos a ir aprendiendo. Creo que por ahí eh, alguien nos compartió ayer una lista de verbos. Así que ahí las podemos ir eh, consultando en caso de que tengamos alguna duda. Vamos a ver. Entonces, vamos a ver dónde nos quedamos ayer, guys. Eh, vamos a ver. Aquí, este video es el que estábamos viendo ayer. Vamos a ponerlo por acá. Bueno, vamos a ir quizás... Solo, ahorita solamente es el recordatorio, ¿verdad? Para poder... Eh, más adelante vamos a practicar, ¿ok? Quiero que practiquemos. Eso es bien importante. Entonces, eh, teníamos la forma para hacer oraciones del tipo positivas. Dijimos que era el sujeto. Por acá está. Ajá. Acá está. Teníamos nosotros el sujeto. Puede ser un pronombre, como este de acá. O puede ser un nombre, un nombre propio. Teníamos luego el verbo en pasado. Y por último, el complemento, ¿verdad? Entonces, yo, por ejemplo, le preguntaba a Iván el día de ayer. Iván, ¿qué es lo que hizo usted esta mañana? Y él me contestaba, bueno, yo estaba enseñando clases en la mañana. Entonces, yo le eh, comentaba a él de que esa es una forma de decirlo. Pero normalmente el pasado simple es para hablar de cosas que sucedieron en el pasado y terminaron. Eh, perdón, denme un segundo, guys. Vamos a ver... Eh... Ahí está. Ok, de nuevo. Entonces teníamos el pasado simple solamente para referirnos, por ejemplo, yo di clases en la mañana. Yo me comí un sándwich hoy en la mañana. Yo me desperté a las 6 de la mañana, por ejemplo. Ok, entonces me gustaría que, vamos a ver, alguien me pudiera decir cosas que hicieron esta mañana, por ejemplo. Puede ser real o puede ser imaginario. Vamos a ver, por ejemplo... Eh, si yo le pregunto a Sullivan, eh, ¿qué es lo que hizo en la mañana? ¿Cómo me contestaría? I woke up, uh -huh. I woke up on the morning uh -huh. and I take a shower. When I took, it, I took, it, I took the shower uh -huh. and I brushed my teeth. So you woke up in the morning. Yeah. Then I took a shower. 
And then I brushed perdón, okay. my set. Creo que así, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, muy bien, muchas gracias, Sullivan. Entonces dice, yo me desperté en la mañana. Ok. Luego, eh, yo tomé una, una ducha. Y luego me cepillé los dientes. Si se fijan, la estructura es exactamente la que estamos utilizando. Es el sujeto más el verbo en pasado. Que en este caso son verbos irregulares. Este de acá y este de acá. Y luego tenemos el verbo que es un verbo regular. Solamente le agregamos ed. Okay? La forma base sería brush. Pero en pasado sería brushed. So I woke up in the morning. Then I took a shower. And then I brushed my teeth. Ok. Entonces ahí está. Esas serían algunas posibilidades acerca de esta pregunta. What did you do this morning? Ok. Esa sería la pregunta. Eso no habíamos llegado todavía hasta allí. Eh, nosotros para hacer las preguntas lo que hacemos es que nos, nos apoyamos en el verbo auxiliar did. Ok. Permítanme un instante, guys. Vamos a darle para atrás aquí. Escape. Ahí está. Vaya, habíamos visto esta estructura que es para las oraciones positivas. Luego, si nosotros queremos hacer una pregunta, ¿qué es lo que hacemos? Utilizamos el auxiliar did. ¿Ok? Entonces es, did you take English classes in Argentina? ¿Ok? Simplemente ponemos al principio de la oración el auxiliar did. ¿Ok? Y el verbo se queda en la forma base, en este caso. Les voy a mostrar por acá. Eh, vamos a ver. Se lo voy a anotar mejor. Vaya, aquí tenemos. Para preguntas, nosotros colocamos el auxiliar did más el sujeto más el verbo en la forma base. ¿Ok? Así. Esta es una pregunta del tipo sí y no. ¿ok? Tenemos dos tipos de preguntas. Tenemos las preguntas de información, que se le llaman WH questions. And then we have the yes, no questions, guys. So when it comes to the yes, no questions, uh, this is the structure. Basically, it is uh, did you or did she uh, take English classes in Argentina? Aquí vamos a poner un complemento. Y por último ponemos el question mark. ¿ok? No nos tiene que olvidar. Aquí lo vamos a hacer completo. Entonces, el verbo auxiliar, did, sujeto, verbo en la forma base, complemento más el question mark, at the end. Just like that. Entonces, acá podemos hacer diferentes preguntas. Eh, por ejemplo, uh, did you take a shower this morning? Or did you Go to work on Sunday. Si se fijan, eh, siempre es la misma estructura, ¿ok? Siempre es básicamente la misma forma. Solamente va cambiando algunas palabras, el complemento o el verbo. Acá le podemos poner otro, por ejemplo, una tercera persona. Puede ser, did she take a shower this morning? Y el verbo auxiliar no cambia. Al, al igual que el verbo acá, siempre va a ir en la misma forma, la forma base. No le vamos a colocar la S, no le vamos a cambiar nada. Va a quedar en la forma base, ¿ok? So, did she take a shower this morning? ¿Y cuáles son las posibilidades para estas preguntas? Como le estaba diciendo, acá es solamente yes or no. ¿Ok? So, in this case, we're going to say yes, coma, she did, Or, no, coma, she didn't. Ahí estarían las dos posibilidades. Entonces, si yo le pregunto a Sullivan, por ejemplo, um, did you take a shower this morning? Then he has to answer, yes, I did. Or no, I didn't. That is going to be the answer to that. Yes, I didn't. Okay, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Very good. Vamos a ver. 
¿Alguna pregunta, guys? ¿Tienen alguna inquietud de cómo hacer alguna pregunta utilizando el pasado? A veces tenemos en la mente como, bueno, ¿y cómo pudiera preguntar esto? Y no estamos muy claros. A ver, no sé si alguien tiene alguna pregunta con respecto a eso. Esta parte es eh, algo sencilla, ¿verdad? Vamos a ponerlo acá, lo vamos a poner de otro color. Uy. Bueno, parece que todo se cambia de color. Ahí está. Ok. Bueno, entonces acá tenemos básicamente... Vamos a poner con esto tal vez. Esta es la estructura para hacer las preguntas. Estas son las preguntas del tipo yes or no. ¿Ok? ¿Qué pasa si nosotros queremos preguntar información? En ese caso, nosotros vamos a hacer, eh, vamos a auxiliarnos de estas, de estas palabras que las conocemos como WH words, ¿ok? So we have, vamos a poner esto por acá. Vamos a poner otra, otro texto. A ver aquí. Entonces tenemos la WH questions, guys. That is how we call it. Okay. Eh, ¿Por qué le llamamos WH Questions? Bueno, porque por lo general comienzan con una de estas palabras. Empieza con when, why, where, who, what? and what. Very good. Thank you, Fran. That is correct. And what. Eh, también tenemos, ya ahora que lo menciona Fran por ahí, tenemos también wish. Sería, vamos a ver. Entonces, por lo general. And how. And how. That is correct. Thank you so much, friend. That is correct. How. We were missing how. Very good. So then, eh, si queremos hacer preguntas en el pasado, de este tipo de preguntas eh, de información, nosotros simplemente le vamos a agregar una de estas palabras al principio. Por ejemplo, teníamos, uh, did she take a shower this morning? Si queremos preguntar información acerca de eso, vamos a poner When did she take a shower? Y el question mark. ¿okay? Entonces, básicamente, solo le colocamos esto al inicio. Lo podemos cambiar también. Le podemos colocar otra palabra. Le ponemos Why. Why did she take a shower? And then, uh, the answer is going to be Uh, because she uh, vamos a ver porque ella uh, she was uh, dirty she was por ejemplo to the disco. <laughs> to the disco. perdón uh, maybe uh, because she was uh, uh, goes or goes to the disco maybe Perdón, eh, Roberto, eh, ¿pudiera repetir otra vez? Uh, bueno, una posible respuesta podría mm -hmm. ser uh, because she was, uh, eh, no me recuerdo cuál es el pasado de go, eh, go to the disco o algo ah, así. Ah, eh, bueno. ok. Went. Went, sí, es correcto. Ok. okay uh, gracias. Thank you so much, Roberto, thank you. So, ok, en este caso Roberto dice porque ella, creo que ella quería o ella fue a la discoteca, ¿verdad? Uh, o ella, pues, pues, ella va a ir, algo así. <ríe> ah, ok, ok. Sí, bueno, en este caso podemos decir, uh, why did she take a shower? Because she wanted to go to the disco, ¿ok? Porque ella quería ir a la discoteca, entonces por eso tomó una, una ducha. Quería ir presentable, ¿verdad? Como decimos nosotros. Because she wanted to go to the disco. Or because she... Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's a good, ex, that's a good option for this. All right. So just like you can see, guys, we can just change the word at the beginning. And we can ask different things, okay? For example, where did she take a shower? Well, she took a shower at home. This morning, por ejemplo. Ella tomó una ducha en casa esta mañana. 
¿De acuerdo? Entonces, eh, son, si se fijan acá las preguntas, vamos a dar información, ¿verdad? No va a ser sí o no, a diferencia de las otras que tenemos acá en este otro lado. Esta de acá, eh, la respuesta es yes, she did, or no, she didn't. Pero en este caso estamos dando información para este tipo de preguntas de acá. Bueno, esto es para todos los verbos. Vamos a ver, vamos a... Creo que ya, ya tienen esto, lo puedo quitar de aquí. Yes, teacher. Thank yes, teacher. You. Thank you so much. Ok, vamos a ver, vamos quizás... Eh, ya vamos a practicar, guys, no se preocupen. Yo quiero que practiquemos ahora. Entonces, vamos a ver aquí. Ok, aquí nos hemos quedado. Esta parte la vimos ayer. Ok. Luego, eh, acabamos de ver las oraciones afirmativas y tenemos también las oraciones, eh, las preguntas. Eh, ¿Qué pasa cuando queremos hacer una oración eh, negativa? So, if we want to... Uh, if we want to say a negative statement, guys, then we are going to follow almost the same structure. The only thing that we are going to do is that we are going to add didn't before the verb. Okay, so we have the subject, then we have didn't, or it can be did not. Okay, so I didn't, or I did not, then the verb in the base form. Okay. You, you, you got to remember that because sometimes we get confused. Sometimes we say, I didn't spoke, but that is not correct. So we need to say, I didn't speak English 10 years ago. Okay. Entonces acá puede ser otro sujeto. Puede ser, por ejemplo, uh, she didn't speak English 10 years ago. Or they didn't speak English 10 years ago. Okay, básicamente el sujeto puede ser cualquiera y la estructura se mantiene igual. Okay, Mario didn't speak English 10 years ago. My mother or my brother, my sister, my aunt didn't speak English 10 years ago. Entonces, todo es igual, ¿verdad? Todo se mantiene igual. Recordemos, el verbo se queda en la forma base. No lo vamos a cambiar. Porque a veces cuando estamos hablando, como decimos, ah, es en pasado, y se nos olvida, el verbo auxiliar lo que hace es de que, en este caso, no tengamos que cambiar el verbo. Es igual que en las preguntas. En las preguntas tenemos, did you speak English 10 years ago? El auxiliar nos ayuda a que el verbo se mantenga igual. No le vamos a cambiar nada. Entonces, esas serían las oraciones de tipo negativas. Vamos a ver por acá... Vamos a avanzar un poco, guys. Bueno, eh, vamos a escuchar esta parte del video. Creo que básicamente lo que les acabo de explicar. Eh, eh, vamos. Classes, how to form questions in the past. And particularly, we're going to focus on forming questions using did. Let's try to make sense of that first question that you see there. When did you move to Los Angeles? Well, First of all, in order to form questions, sometimes we're going to have WH questions and sometimes we're going to have yes and no questions. And I'll explain the quick difference in a second. Whenever we have a WH question, I'm going to start with that first one there. What we do is we have a WH word, such as in this case is when. This follows the auxiliary did. This will follow a subject. And this follows the verb in the present, the verb does not change to the past. When did you move to Los Angeles? So again, very important. We're going to have some sort of WH word that follows auxiliary did, and then it's going to follow the subject. After that, you'll see the verb in its present form. It does not change to the past. And finally, we'll include some sort of complement. And we follow the same pattern in the second question that you see there. With the only difference now is that we don't have a WH word, and that's because this is a yes or no question. So the yes or no question starts with did you, and the verb in its present form, take. The complement is English classes in Argentina. There we go. Okay. 
it all depends on what kind of question you have so wh words we mentioned that we want to elicit information from the person in a yes or no question we simply want to receive a response such as uh, yes or no so the example on how to answer a yes or no question then you'll see it there yes I did or no I did not that's how you create a short response for that kind of question ok very good guys so vamos a hacer algo eh, les voy a preguntar aquí quiero que ustedes me digan algunas ok creo que me hagan preguntas utilizando el pasado vamos a ver Vamos a preguntar a alguien. ¿Estamos claros con el tema o tienen alguna duda? Any questions, guys? About the topic? No questions, teacher. No questions so far. Okay. Bueno, vamos a ver. Entonces, eh, vamos a preguntarle, Francisco, eh, por favor, ayúdeme. Eh, quiero que usted me haga algunas preguntas utilizando el pasado. Pueden ser del tipo yes, no questions, or it can be WH questions. I just need you to ask me whatever you want to, okay? You can ask me, for example, uh, did you eat uh, lunch today or did you go to work? Things like that. Okay, teacher. Uh, did you play sports uh, last week? Okay, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, um, next one. Uh, did you... Did you take did you take breakfast yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Um, veamos con una de información sería Did you? All right. When did, sort of... you, mm -hmm. when, when did you when did you when did you teach when did you teach English language creo que me equivoqué Why is that? Por un... okay. last time okay bueno, muchas, muchas gracias, Francisco. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Fran. Okay. Very good. So, ok, muy bien, muy buen trabajo, Francisco. Ya vamos a que eh, Sullivan quiere participar. Entonces, eh, solamente un par de cositas nada más. Muy buen trabajo, muy buen esfuerzo. Eh, normalmente, cuando preguntamos acerca de si hemos comido algo, recuerden que en inglés eh, tenemos como dos opciones para decir eso. Ok, yo puedo decir que I had lunch yesterday or I ate lunch yesterday por lo general son estas dos opciones ¿verdad? entonces uh, did you eat lunch yesterday or did you eat breakfast yesterday or we can say uh, did you have, have breakfast breakfast yesterday okay that's one way to say it lo podemos decir de estas dos formas y suena como más natural verdad eh, por lo general nosotros utilizamos take cuando estamos hablando acerca de tomar como por ejemplo un medicamento uh, did you take your blood pressure your blood pressure medication por ejemplo, tomaste tu eh, medicamento para la presión arterial. Eso sería como más para la medicina, ¿verdad? Entonces, cuando es de comida, vamos a utilizar uh, Did you have or did you eat breakfast? ¿Ok? Bueno, eh, entonces vamos ahora con Sullivan. Sullivan quería participar. Yep. Ok, go ahead, so, Sullivan. Yeah. First question. Where did you born? Ok, vamos a ver, lo vamos a ir anotando, ¿ok? So, okay. where did you born? Did you born, ok. Muy buena, muy buena, la verdad. 
Vale, aquí antes de que continuemos con las siguientes preguntas de Sullivan, eh, cuando se trata de, cuando preguntamos dónde naciste, que es una pregunta bien común, ¿verdad? Eh, normalmente eh, nosotros no utilizamos esta forma. Eh, nosotros utilizamos where were you born, ¿ok? Este es la, la, el verbo que nosotros vamos a utilizar. Porque okay. nosotros, nosotros decimos I was born en, digamos, eh, la libertad, por ejemplo. Entonces, anotémoslo por allí, guys. Todavía no, no hemos sí. llegado a esa parte porque esa, este es el pasado del verbo to be. Nosotros para hablar de cuándo nacimos utilizamos el verbo to be. So, I was born, she was born in, digamos, in the UK. Se me olvidó una letra. Vaya, entonces ya lo vamos a ver más adelante. Muy bien, Sullivan. Ok, And next one. Next one, ok. Let's go. What was the last type of pizza you ate? What was the last type of pizza that you ate? Ok, muy bien. ¿Alguna otra más, Sullivan? Yeah, how many years take you have your degree? How many years did you? Uh, did no, take, take, many, have your degree. Have your degree. Okay. Okay, it's time. Okay, thank you so much, Sullivan. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay, we are going to just, uh, we have really good, uh, sentences that Sullivan shared with the class, we are just going to make some a little adjustments, okay? Acá yo creo que Sullivan me, nos está preguntando, eh, la pregunta es, eh, ¿cuánto tiempo eh, me tomó para tener mi, eh, digamos, mi grado, como mi grado académico? ¿Es correcto? Sullivan? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you so much, Sullivan. So yes, in that case, um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver cómo lo podemos eh, formular para que suene mejor. Aquí nos hace falta, si ustedes se fijan, nos hace falta el auxiliar did, ¿verdad? Porque para hacer preguntas en el pasado, nosotros utilizábamos el auxiliar did para todos los verbos con excepción del verbo to be. Ok, entonces sería How many years did it take so you aquí es un poco más bueno, algo así sería digamos, yo lo preguntaría de esta forma creo que puede haber otra opción, ¿verdad? tenemos formas diferentes de expresarnos pero acá eh, sería como ¿cuántos años tomó para que pudieras tener eh, tu título o tu grado académico sería how many years did it take so you could have your degree ok, más o menos así lo haría yo un poquito en, en, un poquito de enredado acá, sure. verdad pero sí, dígame could be uh, how long how long that would be another option too how long did it long take did it, did it take mm -hmm. Uh, to have your degree, por ejemplo. Muy bien, muchas gracias, yes. Fran. Entonces, Teacher, acá, sí, dígame. Can we say uh, uh, how many years did it take to, uh, to, to become an engineer? Mm -hmm. That would be another option too. How many years did it take so you could become an engineer, ¿ok? Esa sería otra opción. Muy bien, muchas gracias, Julio César. Entonces sería, ¿cuántos años te tomó para que te pudieras convertir en un ingeniero? How many years did it take? Ok, aquí son oraciones un poco más complejas ya, ¿verdad? Eh, pero siempre estamos siguiendo la misma estructura. Acá tenemos básicamente una WH word. En this case is how. Uh, how many, how long, or how many. Then we have did. 
tenemos luego el sujeto y luego el verbo en la forma base. So, how long did it take to have your degree? Ok, este es el complemento. Todo esto, lo que estamos diciendo. Y por último, el question mark. Ok, so how many years did it take so you could become an engineer? ¿Cuántos años te tomó para poderte convertir eh, en un ingeniero? Eh, por acá, este, este verbo, guys, este verbo es un verbo que más adelante ustedes lo van a estudiar. Prácticamente lo tomamos por lo general como si fuera el pasado de can. ¿okay? Can expresa que poder hacer algo, la habilidad de hacer algo. Y en este caso, could es el verbo eh, en el pasado, por así decirlo. En muchos podría. casos, ajá, es como podría o cuánto... Sí, por ahí va. Es como para expresar posibilidad en, muchas, en muchos casos. Entonces acá eso es lo que estamos diciendo. ¿Cuántos años te tomó para que pudieras tener tu, eh, tu grado o tu título académico? Y aquí lo mismo, en este de abajo. Okay, no, los quiero, eh, no quiero agregar muchas palabras porque no quiero que nos confundamos. Básicamente ahorita estamos eh, enfocándonos en el pasado simple, ¿verdad? No sé si tenemos alguna pregunta, lo que sea, guys. No tengan ningún temor en preguntar. Cualquier inquietud que tengan. ¿Estamos bien por ahora? Yes, teacher. Ok, no questions for now. Ok. Very good. Entonces acá tenemos todos estos ejemplos. Eh, si quieren vamos a borrar estos. Muchas gracias a los que comparten. Esto es muy importante para que todos practiquemos. Ok. Vamos a darle para atrás aquí. Vamos a quitar esto. Vamos a ver. Uy. Give me a moment, guys. Just need to clear everything. Ahí está. Ok, ahí está. Bueno, ya vamos a practicar. Solamente vamos a ver la última parte y luego de eso vamos a practicar. Yo por aquí traigo una presentación en la cual tengo bastantes preguntas que quiero que ustedes practiquen. Y yo lo voy a estar escuchando para asegurarme de que lo estamos haciendo bien. Vamos a escuchar la última parte del video y luego vamos a practicar. The last thing that I would like for you to do is to answer some questions, which I will post in one moment. But before that, what I would like for you to understand is that we can form the past tense by either using was or where, or by using other verbs that are not the verb to be. So whenever you are going to use another verb that is not the verb to be then we're going to think about the structure towards the right it's important not to get confused and so therefore i would like for you to answer the following questions as you can see sometimes i will use did and sometimes i will use the verb to be and the reason that i use did in my questions is because i'm using another verb that is not the verb to be so that's what i want you to notice Bueno, vamos a ver acá, guys. Creo que me lo salté esa parte. Bueno, de todas formas, bueno, sí, creo que se lo voy a explicar. Pensé que estaba en la, aquí en el video. Eh, no, aquí está. Está adelante, no sé por qué. Bueno, vamos a escuchar esta parte que es acerca del pasado utilizando el verbo to be. Okay, vamos para atrás. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to make positive and negative statements using the verb to be. Additionally, you'll be able to make statements such as I was born in China. I wasn't born in the United States. Let me get started by quickly explaining this chart. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this chart and we're going to quickly focus on the left side of this chart. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to make positive statements such as I was born in Argentina and how to make negative statements such as I wasn't born in, let's say, Mexico. The first thing that I would like to explain regarding this topic is 
one basic rule, and that's the birth to be. So let me uh, let me get to that. What I want to do is explain the following concept, and that is just one moment, guys. Let me just speed up the video a little that bit. The verb to be will change depending on the pronoun that you use. For instance, whenever you use the pronouns I, he, she, or it, the verb to be that we're going to have to use for positive sentences is was. And whenever we make a negative sentence, then we're going to have to use wasn't. So if you look at our example here at the top, I was born in Argentina. Um, if I use another pronoun, let's say that I use the pronoun he, then I will say he was born in Argentina. If I were to use the pronoun she, then I would say she was born in Argentina. And obviously the same thing whenever we make a positive or negative sentence uh, with the um, other um, pronouns. So if I were to talk about we, then we will say something like we were born in Argentina. Um, you were born in Argentina. They were born in Argentina. Uh, so let me quickly explain, uh, you know, what the structure looks like. So in order to do that, we're going to have a subject plus uh, the verb to be in the past, and then we're going to have some sort of complement. So the example is, um, I was born in Argentina. Okay. And then what I want to say is, I also want to give a negative statement. So I want to say, I wasn't born in uh, China. This is the uh, first example that I gave you at the beginning. Um, and what I want to do at this time, I just want to quickly color that. I'm going to color the subject in red. And I would like to color uh, the verb in green. And then the complement, I'm just going to go ahead and color that in a different color. It could be any color. The only thing that I want you to notice is that uh, we have a subject at the beginning that follows the verb to be and then that follows some sort of complement in order for us to make the positive statements or the negative statements. So I mentioned that um, the subject, we can change that to any subject that we would like. So for example, he, we could say he was born in Argentina. Uh, we could say she was born in Argentina. And also, I quickly want you to learn that you may also use names here. So for example, you may say Peter was born in Argentina. Right, uh, Mary was born in Argentina, and so on and so forth. Uh, and of course, if we want to make negative statements, then we would say something like this: uh, He wasn't born in Ar in China. Right? I was born in Argentina. I wasn't born in China. Whenever we change the subject, now we use you. So therefore, we're going to have to use the verb to be where, and in our negative statements, that would be weren't. So, uh, you were born in Argentina, and of course we can say you, and this will be in its negative form, so this will be you weren't born in China. In Argentina. Alright guys, so here we have the explanation about the verb to be in the past, just the simple past, okay? So we have for this, uh, we have I, he, she and it, we are going to use was for those, okay? So whenever you use we, you, and they, you guys are going to use were, okay? So we were born in Argentina. You were born in Argentina, and so on, okay? We can also use names, just like he explained in the video. And we have the positive sentences like this. We have negative sentences. We can do it like this. It can be, I wasn't born in China or I was not born in China. Those are the two options that we have. And then, guys, we have the questions. Tenemos eh, también acá preguntas del tipo WH questions, okay? Si se fijan, lo que hacemos es invertir el orden, okay? Teníamos, you were born. Y para hacer la pregunta es, were you born? Y en este caso, si queremos preguntar información acerca de esto, colocamos una WH question at the beginning. So, where were you born? I was born in Argentina. Y luego le pregunta, were you born in, los, in Buenos Aires? Esta pregunta es del tipo sí, no. Okay? Entonces la respuesta es, yes, I was. No, I wasn't. I was born in Córdoba. Entonces básicamente sigue la misma, eh, el mismo patrón, 
que estas otras preguntas de acá. Solamente que en este caso estamos hablando acerca de ser o estar en el pasado. ¿Ok? Creo que, eh, bueno, no sé si tenemos alguna pregunta antes de que practiquemos, guys. Creo que esta parte tal vez, eh, bueno, está bastante sencilla. No sé si tenemos alguna pregunta antes de que, que podamos practicar. Por acá tengo yo unas preguntas eh, en la presentación que se las voy a compartir a ustedes y quiero que nosotros utilicemos esas preguntas solamente como, como un ejemplo. ¿Ok? Any question, guys, about the topic? Before we practice, I want you to practice for at least uh, 14 minutes, okay? Before we go. Do you have any questions, guys? Una pregunta? No preguntas, okay. Bueno, entonces en este caso le voy a compartir por acá. Vamos a ver aquí. Me imagino que ya lo pueden ver. Entonces estas preguntas son con las que vamos a estar trabajando. Por ejemplo, eh, vamos a hacer grupos. Eh, ¿Cómo les parecería mejor? Eh, ¿Creen que sería mejor en parejas o en grupos, por ejemplo, de tres? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo creen que sería mejor para ustedes? Vamos a hacerlo de votación. Couples. Parejas, ok. Very good. So we're going to make couples. I'm going to make couples here. And we are going to practice these questions, ok? So one of you can say, where did you go for your last vacation? And then the other person is going to answer to that question. For example, you can say, so I went to El Tunco Beach, por ejemplo, ¿verdad? <laughs> Tan famoso que es. Entonces podemos decir así, I went to El Tunco. For example, then you can say whatever you want to, ok? Pero vamos a utilizar, si se fijan, la estructura, ¿verdad? Estamos preguntando acá, utilizando el pasado de, del verbo go. Entonces vamos a contestar de esa misma forma. I went to El Tunco. Or what did you learn at school yesterday? Estos solo son ejemplos. Ustedes pueden utilizar la que quieran. What was your first memory? Who was your first friend? Ahí pueden decir ustedes lo que ustedes gusten. Hay varias preguntas acá. Entonces, eh, vamos a hacer las parejas, vamos a practicar por al menos unos 12 minutos antes de que nos marchemos, ¿ok, guys? Así que aquí vamos, vamos a ver. Ahí está, 6. Vamos a hacer ahorita. Les voy a enviar las preguntas por WhatsApp. Si ustedes... Vamos a ver por acá. Vamos a ver aquí. What's the last movie you saw? Okay, here we go. Vamos a... Breakout rooms.
Julio. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Hello, teacher. Hello, Julio, Roberto. How are you guys? We're fine. Very good. Fine. Okay, so Julio, uh, you were saying that you didn't receive the questions yet? No, I haven't. You haven't received the questions yet. All right. Well, I sent you the questions in the WhatsApp group. So I don't know if you want me to send it somewhere else. Uh, yeah, I have received. You got him. Okay, so you got him, Roberto. Sí, bueno, yo sí. Ok, vamos a ver. ¿Cómo se los puedo compartir de otra forma para que no tengamos problemas? Tal vez por el chat. Sí. Por medio del grupo, ajá. Bueno, entonces aquí se los voy a enviar, así para que... Maybe you can send it again, because mm -hmm. I'm in the chat, but I can say anything. Oh, I see. Ok, well, I can send them again. That's, that's ok. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so there we go. All right, so I just send them to the meeting chat and I'm also going to send them one more time to the WhatsApp group, one more time, okay? So here we okay. go. Ahí está la primera. Por si acaso, y vamos con la... Hey, I got it, I got them. You got them this time, okay, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Ahí está, por si acaso. Thank bueno, you. You're very welcome, sir. Okay, so I will let you guys practice a little bit and then I will come back to you. So, vamos a ver. Vamos a unirnos a otro grupo por acá. Hey, teacher. Hello, Sullivan. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm doing uh, well. So I have an issue with my partner because he's still driving right now to his home. Oh, I see. So I see. he's in middle of the the traffic, this process. So I think it's difficult for him. So I see. I I try I try to to make my answers of uh, all the questions you have you put it in the uh, WhatsApp. So mm -hmm. uh, I I I try to get my best effort to to do it so that is uh, i'm working right now so very I don't good know if this is program for that maybe we can talk about it and a few questions maybe sure so, sure you can uh, go ahead so. with... yeah okay perfect thank you so what questions did you answer so far sullivan what can you tell me about the questions yeah um, um well I, I will take the the second slide you put it out there Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is the was the last movie I saw? The, it was the uh, Wakanda Forever. Oh, very good. I saw. So the the, the answer is, uh, I saw. Wait, wait, wait. What was the last movie you saw? I was. No. What was the last movie you saw? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in this case, you can say something like the last movie I saw. The last movie, yeah, the last movie I saw is Wakanda, Wakanda Very Forever. Good. Okay, Very the good. second one. What was the la the last book you read? Uh the last book I read is uh about the couples or marriage, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the third one. Uh, when did you last have a bad dreams? Last night. <laughs> uh, the last. <laughs> Yeah, it's very difficult for me, right? So the the last bad dream that I have it was uh, last night. This is I'm thinking the 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 long answer. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you last tell me about the lies? When last tell a lie? When did yes, you I last think? tell a lie? Yeah, the the last tell a lie was yesterday. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're you're being what? honest now because you're saying that you told a lie yesterday. So that's <laughs> that's really yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what did you watch on TV last week? Uh, let me see. On TV, I see a lot of things, but the things I I take my attention. The last, um, I mean, 
I watched on TV last week was uh, the the documental of uh, airplanes MH three hundred seven seven O something like that. Mm -hmm. That is the last one who's uh, still disappear of Malaysia. Okay. Um, so the he... last the last thing that you watch on TV last weekend it was a documentary about airplanes. About everything. It was a, about the last airplane. Oh, the last airplane. Okay. Uh, the last airplane. So, yeah. When did you last have the argument with someone? Uh, today. Today. Okay. Yeah. So the the last the last the last I have arguments with someone. It was. Today, that is the answer, uh, uh, answer right? Mm -hmm. That will be... Yeah, okay. When did you last have an argument with someone? So I had an argument with someone today. Yes, very good. Okay. How did you travel to school today? Uh, well, in this case, you can change it. You can just say, how did you travel to work today? Uh, uh, even that one, because I work on, on home. So ah, so I work working from home. home. I yeah, see. I work from home. So you can say, I, I didn't travel to work today because I work from home. I didn't travel to work today because I work up from home. Okay. Very good. Very good, Very Solomon. Well. Very good job. Very good. Okay, okay the eight. Uh, what was the last time you cried? Oh, wow. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> so it was a long um, time ago. That's why you don't yeah, remember. Yeah, it was. Yeah, this was a long time ago. I don't remember right now. What was um the last thing you cook? The last thing I cook was a uh, egg. That's it. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, who was your first teacher? Do you remember that? Because I think no. that I, I can remember who my first teacher was. It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. I can remember the, the first one. Sorry. I see. <laughs> yeah. What was your favorite toy uh, as a child? My favorite toy as a child was a truck. The I plastic see. ones. The, the, okay. the cheapest one come from China. Okay. I see. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, how... Who did you meet uh, uh, at the weekend? Ah, uh, the I met at the weekend uh, my best friend. Okay, uh, good. He was uh, my friend, yes. Uh, when, where did you go last weekend? Uh, I go last weekend. I went. Uh, I, I went, yeah, I went last weekend uh, to Sonsonate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can say something like, so last weekend I went to Sonsonate. Last weekend I went to Sonsonate, okay. What was the first course and, uh, concert you went to? It was, time I, uh, it was a long time ago. The last, the first concert you went to. It was the last, uh, my first course, and I went. It was a Christian one. Okay. Yeah, um, this this is one I remember. So that's, that's the one it. you can remember. Okay. Yeah. Very good, Sullivan. Very good job. Very good. Okay. I liked it. There are just a couple of I things think. that we need to, you know, improve. we need to improve. But that's very good. Yeah. Okay. You're yeah, doing good. I, yeah, I tried to get my best effort, even the time, but because it's too late for me right now. It, it was a heavy day, so I tried. <laughs> I can I imagine. Every yes. day. Yeah. I can imagine. Yes, it's, it's the same for me, and I think that a lot of people have the same situation that we have, yeah, that probably they have to work uh, many hours during the day. Some people, they have to wake up, like, really early. Um. I had some students last month that they told me that they had to wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning 
so they could yeah, go to work. I, I don't sleep today because my child is sick. So oh. I, I went to the hospital at 12 p.m. So since that, I woke up. So I'm oh really goodness. tired. I can imagine. Well, that that's really bad. And I hope that he can feel better, Sullivan. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, well, I think that we can just... Uh, uh, we can just uh, finish with the practice for today because it's okay. already 9 p.m. Sullivan. So I'm going to go back with everybody else uh, okay. so I can say goodbye. And we will okay. be back tomorrow. Okay, we are going to practice tomorrow again. Okay. I promise. Thank you so much. You're Have welcome. Good night. You as well. Okay, so I'm just going to go back. Please bear ah, with okay, me. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yes. okay. <laughs> Solamente le voy a decir adiós a todos. Vamos a ver aquí. Participants use four. What about the rest? See, they are still working. I don't think they go out. No, they, they are still here. Yes, there are like two, four. Yes, there are eight people still connected. I think that they are still working on it. So I'm just going to yeah, say maybe. goodbye. Let's see. Let me just close this really quick. Okay. Break out. Veo que les ha gustado practicar porque todavía están allí. No se quieren salir. <risa> Vamos a ver. Ya solo quedan 18 segundos para que regresen. Y veamos. 13, 12, ya casi. There we go. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for staying until the end. I appreciate that. Okay, guys. Um, well, I hope that you were able to practice at least a little bit. I know that yeah, sometimes it can be difficult because we are doing other things. Sometimes, for example, sometimes we are not at home uh, or things like that. But I hope that you guys have the opportunity to practice at least a little bit. Okay. Like I was saying, I was talking to somebody just a moment ago. We are going to practice again tomorrow. So you can have the opportunity to practice a little bit more. So Guys, thank you so much for coming today. It's been a pleasure for me one more time. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay. So have a great evening, guys. See you bye. See you guys tomorrow. Thank see you. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.